Hello, everyone, and welcome to ACP's live remote non-C offering. My name is Dan Calvo, and I'll be today's moderator. Today's non-C topic is Omniversa, Practical Application, NMES, and Ultrasound for Wound Healing, and will last approximately 30 to 45 minutes. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mark Donaldson, who will be our presenter today. Mark is a physical therapist uh, and clinical program consultant with ACP in the Northeast. Uh, Mark, it is all yours. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to um, view this lab section for wound healing. Today, we're going to focus on a couple of different things. We're going to focus on um, electrotherapy uses, one being pain management related to a wound, and one being high volt sensory related to wounds, as well as the setup for ultrasound treatment for wound healing. So I'm going to get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen first, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I'm doing a screen share because just to find some of the things, some of the resources that we're using for today, um, I'm going to point out the um, uh, ACP clinical solution for wound healing. I pulled this from the lab section. So if anyone has a, a clinical solution for wound healing, this would be in the lab section. I'm going to go forward to sacrum coccyx pressure injury. And this is the setup. Um, we're gonna demonstrate it live, but I wanted to make sure you guys all had access to where it was actually located. So when we're talking about nerve block, we're talking about doing pain management specifically for procedural pain. So if we are having a, an uncomfortable dressing change or if um, a resident's wound is being um, debrided by any means and they're having a lot of pain with that procedure, we can apply nerve block. And we'll demonstrate that in a minute, but I wanted you guys to see just kind of the setup. With an Omniversa, um, it is located in post-traumatic or post-surgical pain under indications, as well as acute pain and chronic pain. So we're looking for sensory nerve block. The sensation should feel kind of numbing, a little bit of a Novocaine type of feel um, to the resident. It should be provided 15 minutes prior to and during the debridement, and that will help to dull down some of that discomfort. The next picture I want to show you is on the very next page of the lab manual. And this is sacrum coccyx pressure injury. So for these on your Omniversa units, it is under the indication increased local circulation. And the protocol is high volt pulse current or HVPC sensory. And the sensation should be a submotor tingling. If we get to a motor twitch, we are too high. So we need to turn down the intensity a bit. The treatment length is working up to 45 to 60 minutes per day. So a couple of different setups they're showing you here. They're showing using a bifurcated lead, which is a lead with four leads on it. And they're doing two acting as dispersive and one acting as direct as a monopolar setup within the wound. The next setup is a bipolar setup. And that is using one channel with two electrodes on either side of the wound. And we'll practice that in lab as well today. Um, I wanted to point this out as well, just a little bit lower on this, on this slide. When we're looking at the wound electrodes, we're using for something, if we're using a monopolar strategy, the electrode that is in the wound is a non-adherent electrode. And we'll demonstrate that. And then we can use an adherent electrode for the dispersives. The other thing I'd like to point out is the polarity of what we're trying to accomplish within, within the wound. So the wound polarity, and that would describe the red or the black is what we're putting into the wound, the red tip versus the black tip, the positive versus the negative. So if we're putting the red within the wound, our clinical goal may be to decrease necrotic tissue. And if you think about the rationale for that, the positive polarity in the wound is gonna attract negatively charged cells to that area. So black tip in the wound, Clinical goal may be decreased infection or inflammation, black tip, increased tissue growth, red tip, increased epithelialization. There is um, a fairly good clinical study um, that was done a few years back that looked at alternating red and black in the wound with black being first for three days. So black for the first three days, red for the second three days and alternating in that fashion. And that way you're really kind of hitting all of these cells that we're trying to attract to the wound bed. Um, I apologize for that. 
On the bipolar setup, and the bipolar setup is quite easy, um, primarily because we don't really have to go into the wound. So the wound can remain dressed. So it, say we're using something like a, a long-term dressing, which is supposed to last about three to five days, and we don't want to take it off necessarily in between because it's expensive. And the goal of it is to keep everything you know, kind of sealed in. We can do something on either side of the wound. So this would demonstrate a left-right approach. If we have an opportunity for a proximal distal approach, then the black lead would be proximal and the red would be distal. And we would have a different stuff. A little bit difficult to do um, on a sacral wound. It's, um, you can certainly get proximal, but distal is a challenge. So, okay, everybody. So if you can see, this is my Omniversa unit right here. Um, I just wanted to go through some of the buttonology of how to, um, set up some of these protocols before we get into the actual setup. So on the top, over here, I do have my infection control layers in place. So again, barrier film over here. So if I have a gloved hand and my contaminated gloved hand is touching a barrier. And that way at the end of the treatment, I can remove this easily. But I have it on there just to, as a demonstration. The um, thought process behind that also would be if I'm reaching down here to use my dial, my dial would also have a barrier on it as well. So when we look at the screen here, this is the home screen. So electrotherapy is our first choice. So if I start there and I get indications, manual mode, favorites, and contraindications are my choices. So if I'm treating through an FDA designated indication, I'm just going to touch that button. So that's going to give me, I don't know if you can see it very clearly here, this white box at the center. This is one of three pages. So the FDA designates several um, electrotherapy indications. So page one, page two, and page three. So I'm going to head back to page one. Our nerve block is the first one we're talking about. Our nerve block is located in post-traumatic or post-surgical pain. And it's located right here, sensory nerve block. So it's the second choice. Our little I button, our little I square, which is right next to it, gives us more information. If I were to touch that, I would get a little blurb, uh, basically um, mechanism of action and um, basically a quick overview of what nerve block does. This is page one of 25, you can see in that center. As I turn the wheel or the dial, uh, several of the protocols are gonna come up. So it's gonna give me several options on how I'm going to be able to set up a nerve block. We're gonna demonstrate it right on our, our, um, our uh, model right here. So I'm not gonna go through all of them because there is again, 25 pages. When I'm done with that, I can go back home. So that's how to access nerve block. It's also under, we're in electrotherapy indications. It is also under acute pain. If we go under increased local circulation on page two, you can also find it. So high volt sensory is this one right here, top information, little mechanism of action. And our pages, we have 24 pages of high volt sensory. So we can scroll through and kind of see what setup we want to use for our wound. So heal, so that would be an option for sacral, sacral looking at a monopolar, trochanteric, or ischial I should say, and down the line we go, we're gonna go back to. There we go, I'm gonna get it. Once we actually get to the protocol we want, and again, within all of these choices, it is this, it's basically the same protocol, it's high volt sensory. We would hit this okay button. We would decide whether we wanna use channel A, channel B, or channel A and B. For our purposes today, for lab, we're gonna choose A. And then our setup is gonna be complete. So we have high volt pulse current, we have a treatment time of 45 minutes, and maybe this is the first time that you're treating this resident for a wound. Maybe this is a, a session that we want to use, highlight and turn it down and maybe just 
see how they tolerate 20 minutes today. Our Hertz are 125. I'm just gonna slide this back ever so slightly. Just so you can see, our output is zero. So that's for our channel A, zero volts. Once we highlight that, we can use our wheel and start turning up our output. Once we get to a strong sensory sensation, then we can hit start and that will start our treatment. If we get to a motor twitch, we want to highlight and turn it down. We don't want to be a motor at this point. And then stop to stop the treatment. So back home for this. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple of different setups. Now what we have, we've got our Omniversa here, and we've got our unfortunate friend here, who is our model. I'm just going to move our model up just a, just a little bit so you can see. And again, unfortunate friend, he was stage four sacral. Um, we have a stage three uh, ischial. Um, we have a stage one ischial, and we have a stage two trochanteric on this four person. So we're going to do setups for our, our stage four today. So basically what I've done ahead of time is I've set up the infection control in order to cover our lead wires. So basically what we have, I have um, two adherent electrodes, basically ready for a bipolar treatment. I've covered these lead wires completely all the way up to the unit. Because if, again, if I'm a, if I'm a gloved hand, I wanna to be touching things that have a barrier. So my contaminated hand is touching something that can be removed um, as the lead wires are multiple use. And then we would always clean the lead wires afterwards. So once I have this set up, and I have my patient prepped or my resident prepped. So if I do have an open area to treat right here, I've irrigated the wound, cleaned out, et cetera. Um, I've done all that ahead of time. For my bipolar setup, again, if I had a choice of proximal distal, my black lead would be proximal, but I don't have that choice. So I'm gonna be doing side by side. So I'm just gonna peel off the backings. Yeah, I've been doing it much like this. So when we're thinking about doing a treatment like this, again, this is a stage four um, pressure injury. Um, some people worry a little bit if, if this was dressed, so suppose this had a considerable dressing on it that extended far beyond the sides. Um, do not worry about having to move your electrodes a little bit more distally away from the wound. So again, if I had to move them distally, I'd walk down the skin so I wouldn't be tearing the skin. I could move them a little bit more distally. And again, when I move the electrodes a little bit more distally, I'm biasing the depth a little bit. Um, as I move them farther apart, the current will travel more deeply. So if I do have a stage four here, which is relatively deep, that's okay that I've pulled those farther apart. If I'm snugged right up to the wound, then my surface charge will be just a little bit more superficial. So it's fine that we're pulled away like that. So then I would run my treatment. Again, back to electrotherapy, indications. It is on page two. Increase local circulation. Uh, I'm gonna do my little high volt sensory. I'm not gonna do the information button this time. I'm gonna do channel A and I'm gonna start increasing my intensity. When I'm at the intensity that I want to be at, oh, start the treatment, sorry about that. <laughs> start the treatment and run the treatment for as long as I've intended to do it for this first treatment. When the treatment is done, it will automatically stop. If I need to stop in the process, I can just hit the stop button. And that would be that. So again, this one I find is the easiest setup when we're doing a bipolar. When we're doing a monopolar, we need to find this box. <laughs> and inside this box, within your department, it's usually a bag. And inside that bag, we have these non-adherent four by four electrodes. So again, they're black on the other side. They're non-adherent. There's nothing sticky on them. 
And we would need to cut this electrode to fit within this wound. So um, this wound is relatively large. So I pre-cut a piece this big. So again, not in here on the back, I pre-cut. What I will do is I will moisten gauze with saline and get it really as wet as possible. And then I'm gonna gently pack the wound and keep it nice and wet with saline. This electrode will then be placed right on top of the wet saline. Once we have that in place, you can use whatever, um, typically it's paper tape we would use, but whatever uh, you're using for wound healing to hold that in place. And get the second piece. Okay, so now that we have that set up, again, really wet saline, I'm gonna remove my second adhesive electrode. And this is our positive lead. And I'm gonna connect it like so. So I've got my positive lead within the wound, within the wound, my negative lead acting as a dispersive. So then I will go ahead and do the exact same thing. Get out of this screen. Electrotherapy, indications, increased local circulation, high volt pulse current, channel A, and increase my output. This time I will not hit stop, I will hit start. There we go. <laughs> so now we are running this treatment. So again, we're going to strong sensory. If we're seeing a motor twitch, we wanna back it down to stay in that sensory mode. So when the treatment is done, we're gonna stop. Uh, that's the, for a different day. <laughs> we'll take it home. When we're done the treatment, we would have to, obviously when we're treating a monopolar, we're in the wound. So we would have to remove all of these gently, right? Take off your leads. We would discard follow facility policy as far as your infection control uh, removal of everything. Typically we would be dirty, would be touching dirty and clean would be touching clean. So you'd have a gloved hand and a clean hand and you'd start peeling off everything that's contaminated. So these are single use. So they do get thrown away. If you are planning ahead or if you're planning to do this for a period of time, you, prior to a treatment, prior to contaminating that, we could um, uh, cut out a template of the size. And then at least when we're doing tomorrow's treatment, we've got a template for the size until it starts reducing in size. So we have a better, a better picture of what it's doing. So that is what we have for e-stim. Ultrasound gets a little bit more complicated um, and it's only complicated, I think, because um, we, we do have to undress the wound completely. So whatever the wound dressing is that's in place has to be removed. So, and we want a clean wound as well. So um, if they're having something that is um, uh, a wound filler type of dressing, cleaned out, everything good. Then we would use something like this. This is just an example. Use whatever your facility has. And this is just hydrogel. This is sterile. It is typically on the nursing cart. I have a big tube right here, but um, oftentimes on the nursing cart, you'll have a, a individual size tube. So what we're gonna do once we've cleaned this out, we have a nice clean area to work with. We're gonna use hydrogel, sterile hydrogel to fill the wound. And when I say fill the wound, I mean fill the wound. Okay. When it's filled, I tend to overfill it a little bit primarily because we wanna make sure that we're capturing it again, gloved hands, I'm not demonstrating that right now. We wanna make sure we've um, covered all of the little areas, little pocket areas where the, we want the gel to go into. Remember, ultrasound is not gonna travel through air. So if we have any air pockets within here, we wanna make sure they're completely full. Uh, and at times too, if the patient or the resident changes position, sometimes that creates a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, a shifting 
of the gel. So we want to be uh, wary of that. So I tend to overfill it a little bit, which, which I guess is, I guess is fine. Uh, but my next piece is we want to put a cover over this since we're not going to want to contaminate that nice sterile gel we just put in there. Typically what we would use is something like a tegaderm, right? So I'm peeling one right now. You can use something like that. It comes in various sizes. So whatever your facility is using, I like the bigger size ones only because they, um, only because if we do have a really big wound, it's nice to be able to get a nice big cover on it. So again, no air. We want that nice and covered in here. And I'm gonna peel off this. And we're gonna peel off this. Again, the ultrasound is not gonna travel through paper, <laughs> nor air. So we wanna make sure we have a nice fit. There we go. And again, I have, uh, Again, a little unfortunate person here, model, who is doing this. So the contours of my model are actually not too bad. Um, on an actual person, a living human being, um, sometimes it takes a little bit more effort to get this really nicely fitted toward them. So we want, and again, we want to make sure, peel it back again, we want to make sure that we don't have any air. So once we have a nice barrier on top of this, we've got our gel with no bubbles in it. Then we're going to reach for our transducer. So our transducer is sometimes attached to the unit. Sometimes people keep it, keep it separate. Either way, what we're going to do is we're going to have it plugged into C or D on the bottom. You're going to have our transducer like this. So I've gone ahead and prepped my transducer a little bit. So what I did was, again, I attached the tube cover. So the tube cover is fitted all the way up to the unit. So my contaminated gloved hand is touching a, a barrier. And then what I also did was I covered this with an ultrasound sheath. So the sheaths come in a box that looks like this. When you open the box, the sheaths come on a sheet of paper. So I don't know if you can see that super clearly, but on the top is a pocket right here, top is a little pocket and the bottom is just adherent to here. So the tricky part of this, um, and it, again, it's not really that tricky, is we need to fill this pocket and it doesn't have to be completely full with ultrasound gel. And the reason being, once we put this transducer inside the pocket, there'll be air in there. So we wanna make sure, and I pre-filled this one, what I've done was you fill the pocket with, with ultrasound gel and then you slide it over the transducer. So looks funny. Yep, I get it. <laughs> but again, we've got a good infection control barrier here and we should have some good conduction too with all that ultrasound gel. So once we've done that and we're ready to go, I'm gonna grab more ultrasound gel. And since this is contained completely, I'm able to put ultrasound gel on top of my tegaderm. Um, ideally, we're not shaking the ultrasound gel um, because again, that puts bubbles in it. And bubbles are air and the sound waves do not travel through air. Once we are ready, and once we have set the equipment up, we can start. So in one hand, I'm gonna do this. Indications, <laughs> ultrasound, increased local circulation. We're gonna do, uh, let's, do uh, let's do, you know what? I'm gonna take it back and I'm gonna show you this one. I'm going to show you manual mode. Pulse to continuous, that gives us more choices. We're at three megahertz, so we're actually at a one inch deep. You would have to gauge it based on your wound. Is this an inch? And is this an inch? That way we've got two inches. Maybe we need to be at a one megahertz treatment. We're pulsed at 20% duty factor, and those are the typical protocols for our ultrasound treatment. It's preset at 15, and again, we can drop it right down. It is five minutes per ERA when we're working with the wound. So with this wound in particular, the ERA is two times the sound head size. 
So I'm just about there with one, doing one ERA. So five minutes would be fine, or two ERA, sorry. Increase the output. I'm going to be at about a 0.5 watts per centimeter squared. Okay, and I'm going to start. I'm going to dip this into the gel. And again, nice and slow. Not too much has changed. Nice and slow. It should be, should be kind of boring if we're doing it correctly, right? <laughs> One, two centimeters per second. We're treating right into the wound bed. So just like this. When the treatment is done, it will beep. And we'll be finished. Again, gloved, if you're gloved hands, all the, our infection control things come off of gloved hand, with gloved hands. And then we would clean everything um, very well with a, um, an approved super Santa cloth. So not the, not the resident, but the transducer. Once the, the cord covers come off, the whole cord would have to be treated. Um, the lead wires, again, the screen, and the whole unit. Probably the more difficult part of this treatment is now that we've done um, a lot with this wound, if this is not the typical wound dressing this resident would have, all of this has to come off. So at this point, you know, maybe we remove some of the layers here, I'll ask nursing to come in so they could uh, provide the correct uh, wound dressing on top of that. So Mark, thank you again for a wonderful presentation. Well